everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing two more slimline cards using components from the Simon Says Stamp All the Feels release. This is the March 2021 release. All of the products I'm using here, with the exception of some basic dies, are brand new. That goes for the stencils, the stamp sets, um, all of that good stuff. We are going to start with the Sweet Garden Birds stamp set. I was really inspired by the Sweet Garden Birds and then the Sweet Garden Blooms. So you'll notice that both stamp sets I'm using today are very similar in style. One is the bird stamp set, which is what we're going to be using first. And then the other one is a floral stamp set. I'm using Pink Fresh Studio inks today. So for our first bird, what's so awesome is the wings and the body of the bird are separate. And then there's a like little belly piece that you can add the feathers for the belly. Um, there's wings and then there's also some florals in this set. I'm not using them today. And then there's the face. So these are just really great buildable stamp sets that are fantastic for all of your colorful inks. Um, maybe you want a break from coloring. I know I did and I thought this would be so much fun. In fact, I was really inspired to do kind of like a rainbow um, order of birds for my card. It's part of the reason we got a slimline card and then I just did two slimline cards because they're very user friendly for uh, the big XL greetings stamp set. Um, which I used on another card that I shared yesterday as well. So definitely check that out. I will link it at the end of this one, but it's just a great sentiment stamp set. And I love that there's coordinating dies for each of it. So for my first bird set, you'll notice I'm keeping my birds in the misty in the same spot and I'm just simply cleaning them, flipping that paper around and then stamping the layering stamp on top and then stamping the wings in a darker shade in the same color family. For the first bird, I used Pink Fresh Studio inks in Coral Reef and Passion Fruit. And then this color combination is going to be my yellow color combination, which is Lemon Whip and Sweet Mustard. There you can kind of see how I'm building these. I simply cut down several panels of four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock, and I'm switching them out. That way I'm not having to like move my stamp each time. I was really looking for time savers with these particular projects. The next color combination is sky blue and summer shower. And I did all of like the left facing birds first. So that's kind of why I'm going every other. We have kind of the pinky red, the yellow, and the blue. And then next we're gonna grab our other bird and the other style of wing, and we're gonna do our orange and green birds. So our next color combination, and here is our other bird. We're going to be using a little bit of peach fuzz and apricot. And I absolutely love these Pink Fresh Studio inks. I know I've mentioned them a lot. I have been asked a ton, um, you know, about the inks and what inks I really like. I will tell you if you are looking for inks that have lots of shades in the same color family that work together, Pink Fresh Studio inks are amazing. They also have like cubes you can get. So they kind of, I think they come in four packs and the colors coordinate with each other. And if you are really looking for inks that go together, I highly, highly recommend the Pink Fresh Studio inks. Plus they stamp beautifully. I know I'm having to stamp some of these images more than once. These are brand new stamps. Um, sometimes brand new stamps don't always stamp the best. And I really wanted to make sure my coverage was super, super good. Finally, my last color combination for the fifth and final bird is mint and meadow. 
Plus, aren't these names fun? I absolutely love them. On my blog post that coordinates with this video, I will list out the colors I used together for easy reference. Um, because I know sometimes the video goes by pretty fast and if you are looking for maybe similar color combinations or you just want to reference that later on, definitely grab that link down below the video and check out my blog post for that information. Now keep in mind these are all dye inks. As that ink dries into the cardstock, it is going to mute a little bit because as it dries it lightens just a tad. In fact, some of those that I've already stamped have lightened up quite a bit. Now that we have the body and the wings all stamped, we can grab the face stamps from this set. And I opted, instead of doing a black ink today, I am gonna do espresso, which is a really nice deep dark brown. And there's two different faces, I think maybe I just said that, um, but you can uh, grab the one that coordinates with the bird. Again, I am just going to put that stamp in my Misty and do all of the right facing birds and then all of the left facing birds to keep it really simple and assembly line style, which I totally love. Once we have all of the faces stamped, it is time to take the coordinating dies and die cut all of the pieces. The wings, while there's two different styles, there's only one set of dies. So they work for each set of wings, which is super nice. And then there's um, a different body die for each bird. I am gonna die cut all of those pieces and then we're going to build a pretty stenciled background that matches our birds, so it kind of follows the same color design, and then we're gonna stamp a greeting or a couple of greetings and add those to our cards with some foam adhesive. Next up, I love the slimline stencils. If you're making slimline cards, they these are just phenomenal because they fit and you don't have to try to piece them together. This is the new I Like Small Dots stencil. And what I decided to do was take the lighter shade from each color family that I used for the birds and ink up my panel. Starting down at the bottom, we're gonna use sky blue and I'm using some Gina K ink blending brushes. I did make sure I have a, a microfiber cloth over there on the side. That's that kind of limey green cloth that is pretty inked up, but I am cleaning my brushes before I start inking, just in case there's a darker ink color kind of left over from before. Next, I am using that mint color. From there, we're gonna go to Lemon Whip, Peach Fuzz, and Coral Reef. I just love the names of these inks. Not only are they some of my most favorite ink colors, and I do use them all of the time, but the names are super, super fun. I'm kind of blending each section into the dots before so that there's this really pretty ombre effect from one color to another. I love a good stencil for creating your own pattern background. I think it's so much more interesting than a plain, type of colored cardstock background or even just an inked background. I love a little bit of a stencil and there are some really good ones in this latest All the Feels release from Simon Says Stamp. I am going to clean off whatever red ink was on my blending brush before because the coral reef is a nice light peachy kind of red and I definitely don't want that super dark. When I remove the stencil we are left with this beautiful polka dot background that would really work for anything. I'm then going to line up my birds and I actually laid everything out just to kind of see how it was all going to fit. I grabbed a XL greeting. I'm going to use thinking of you for this first card and what I ended up doing was placing it in my Misty and I'm inking it up with a couple of colors of the Pink Fresh Studio inks that I used before. So I think I used Coral Reef, 
uh, passion fruit and apricot or maybe peach fuzz. I maybe even both of them. But just so it's kind of that pinky red color combination, I chose those two colors because that's where that sentiment's going to fall in the panel. I opted to do it up near the top of my panel. If you're going to put it down near the bottom and you're doing something similar with the color combination, I probably would have picked maybe the green and the blue. So kind of just following along with the design of the card. Now, one of the things I love, love, love about the XL Greeting stamp set is there's coordinating dies. If you are a fan of the original XL Greetings stamp set, I think you're gonna absolutely love this new one. Um, it's just fantastic. The sentiment can stand alone or it works with other images like I'm using here today. I am gonna die cut that and then from there, I am going to just put together my card. I did speed this up a little bit. We're putting foam adhesive on the back of our sentiment, on the back of our birds and just gonna kind of add everything to our card design. So I did start with my sentiment first. Kinda wish I would have added my orange bird first because I had to kind of pop up a little section with some undo adhesive remover to tuck a wing underneath, but that's okay. And I'm going to pop up all of my birds with some foam adhesive as well. I purposely did every other one so each bird would be facing a different direction. I thought that they would flow together a little bit better that way. And then I did tuck the one wing underneath the sentiment. I don't want it up over the sentiment covering up any of the words. So that one is attached kind of directly to the card base. And then part of the bird's head is up over the sentiment, but not enough where you can't read it. I really like things to overlap just a little bit, and so that's what I am working on here. After we kind of get that initial fussy working of putting the sentiment and the first bird down, it's so much easier to add the rest. I am gonna quickly add foam adhesive squares to the back of each of these and add those to the panel. Now at this point, your card really could be done once you've got your birds down in place. Or if you're like me, I always love little finishing touches. I probably tend to go just a little bit <laughs> uh, overboard, uh, but I do love when I have a big sentiment, I like adding a small one with that. There are some really cute little sentiments in the Sweet Garden Birds stamp set. Um, there's, you've got this, thanks, congrats, oh yeah, and just wing it. Isn't just wing it so cute? I didn't use that today, but I love it. Um, one of the things I love the most about the thanks, congrats, and oh yeah, is they're curved and they're curved to kind of follow the curve of the bird, which I am gonna use one of those on my panel, and we're also gonna use You've Got This. I like how the You've Got This, these are all cursive, by the way, from the Sweet Garden Birds. So we're gonna use You've Got This with the Thinking of You, and I think it works really naturally together. You can see I've laid out the stamp on my panel, just kind of pre-planning. I'm gonna grab one of the slimline card bases from Simon Says Stamp. It measures three and a half by eight and a half inches and pop my panel in place. Now, one of those products that I was talking about at the beginning of the video that is not brand new is the slimline rectangle die, is what I use to die cut the panel that I stenciled the polka dots on. And then I'm gonna use some of my scrap paper left over from die cutting the birds to stamp You've Got This using the Pink Fresh Studio licorice ink. This, it's licorice, it does look black. I will tell you as this dries, I would kind of classify it more as a very dark gray, which is fine. That's what I wanted here. I really wasn't looking for a black. Um, I felt like black, kind of, when I don't have a black outline anywhere else, I'm not a huge fan of black. I really like it to kind of coordinate better uh, with the card design. 
You can see I just stamped that little oh yeah underneath the belly of the bluebird and I love, isn't that cute how it just kind of organically follows the shape of the bird. I really, really like that. With the You've Got This, we're going to take a nested banners die, which is one of my most used Simon Says Stamp die sets. It's a great basic. Um, this one and the sentiment labels, both of them I highly, highly recommend if you like using a lot of sentiment strips on your cards. I'm going to use the rounded edge one and we're going to die cut that and then pop it right above the thinking of you right over the red bird using a little double sided adhesive. At this point I did opt to add some little hearts because you guys know me. It's really hard for me not to. I love adding like little hearts or stars to finish off my cards. And what I did was take tone on tone hearts. Um, these little teeny tiny clay hearts. These are all from Trinity Stamps. And we're going to just kind of follow the colors of our birds. I did not have any orange hearts. I feel like I did at some point. Maybe I've used them all. I know I have some little orange stars, but I wanted to really use hearts today. So I'm going to use a white heart for my orange bird. Now I originally just added a heart to each bird, but then I did go back off camera and add in a few additional hearts uh, throughout the rest of the card panel. I didn't do it today. Um, I kind of ran out of time and I didn't think of it really until I got to the editing part of this video and I'd already photographed everything. But I will say I have been sharing tons and tons of ideas on stamping your envelopes. I really think I will go back and stamp the bird, one of the birds, from this stamp set on my slimline envelope from Simon Says Stamp to coordinate with this card so everything matches. Let's move on to our next slimline card. We're going to use the new large chevron stencil, another beautiful new slimline stencil from Simon Says Stamp. This time though, I really thought I would do rainbow again for this stencil, but as I started to add my sky blue, I thought it really wasn't the vibe I was going for with this card. So I actually ended up opting to just do the entire panel with sky blue. And I love it. I absolutely love the design. This is going to keep it a lot less busy, but still give it a beautiful patterned background. What we're gonna be doing for this card is stamping a bunch of the flowers from the Sweet Garden Blooms stamp set um, in kind of the uh, reddish colors. We're gonna use Passion Fruit and Coral Reef and then our yellow colors as well as the greenery. But I'm not using um, any oranges in this particular card. So the background's gonna be blue, the sentiment's gonna be blue, we're gonna have uh, red and yellow flowers and then that is it for this one. And I thought the single color background just worked really a lot better with the colors I'm choosing to use for this card. So, so pretty. And you could do this in any color to match whatever kind of card you're making. For me, I love a really subtle pattern paper background and I personally really love um, creating my own backgrounds. And this is a great way to do that. To stamp these flowers, I will tell you because it's a build a flower stamp set, I opted to die cut from white cardstock the shape first, place it back in the cardstock panel, and then stamp the flower. For me, this just really worked the best so that I didn't accidentally not line it up right and wasted a bunch of cardstock and had to re-stamp a bunch of things. So I die cut it, I placed the die cut back into the panel in my Misty, lined up the stamp, and then I'm simply adding all of the colors. The greenery for the two floral images from this stamp set do not have layering stamps for them. So what I did was I stamped once or twice with the mint ink, and then I kind of just inked up the edges of the greenery with meadow ink 
and stamped that again. That's why a lot of the greenery looks like it's two-tone even though there aren't two stamps. I am gonna do this a few more times and kind of just show you the process. We'll place our little die cut piece. I need to die cut a few more. Um, I'm gonna give you a little hint. What actually works the best is if you use the same spot in your die cut. So just switch out the die cut, but use the same spot. You don't have to move your stamp. I don't know why I didn't do that the first couple times. I kept moving my stamp around, which is so silly, but I ended up just kind of switching my image out and stamped a bunch all at once. So I definitely got smarter as I went and it was a great assembly line style. I knew I was going to need quite a few of these flowers because I'm creating this background. First we have the stenciled background, then we've got some kind of all over florals and then we're going to have a big sentiment with a little phrase underneath. And the florals are just really, really pretty. This is a fantastic floral stamp set. I only used two of the images. There's others in this, more like little individual flowers, more leaves, really, really pretty. So I'm gonna die cut a few more of these flowers and then we will stamp those up. As I mentioned, the red color combination is coral reef and passion fruit. The yellow is lemon whip and sweet mustard. I tend to start with the greenery first and then move on to the colorful part of the flower. For the yellow flowers, there are two stamps to give the layering for the red, there's also two, but there's actually, it's one, two, three, five different pieces for the flowers themselves. So there's um, two layering pieces for the big flower, two for the small, and then the little bitty teeny tiny ones, there's a little trio. So five different stamps for that. For my sentiment, also from the XL Greetings, I'm actually using three shades of blue. So before I've used sky blue, summer shower, um, that was the two colors for the birds. And then I used the sky blue for the background. I decided I felt like I needed a little deeper, darker for that ombre effect of the sentiment. And I used some storm ink as well. Um, then die cut that with the coordinating XL greetings to die. For the yellow flower, this is a good example. I've left this paper in the misty and I'm switching out the dye. It took me a little bit to figure out the best way to do this, but this definitely works the easiest and the quickest. You can see I'm just lining it up, popping in the next one. I've already done the first layer of the flower and the, the greenery, the leaves. And my Spellbinders tool in one, I love that thing. I use it all the time. Most often used tool in my craft room. Okay, now that we have our flowers, I'm gonna kind of get a general idea of where I think everything is gonna go. One of my favorite things when doing an all over die cut background like this is anything hanging off the edge. This is a fantastic opportunity to take that and glue those all in place, let the glue kind of dry, and then trim off that excess. And a lot of those little pieces can be used to fill in edges so that you don't have to stamp multiple florals all over the card design. You're gonna see that a lot here. Um, I need to figure out where my sentiment's gonna go because I don't wanna put a really beautiful floral right underneath that. I want them kind of coming out from behind, but I don't wanna waste all of that space. So I'm gonna lay that down first so I have a good idea, and then we're just gonna glue all of these in place. So anything that's hanging off the edge, I'm going to trim off, and you'll notice here in a minute that I'm going to fill in with about I think four, four edge pieces. So you really get 
um, and can use up a lot of those little scraps. The great thing about the, the little trio of flowers too is all of those little pieces in between leaves and things don't stay white. They do die cut, which is really nice. I always love that attention to detail when companies make sure they die cut nice like that. We're gonna pop up our Sending Lots of Hugs sentiment. And again, we're gonna mix sentiments. The Sending Lots of Hugs is from the XL Greetings 2, and then the um, Sweet Friend is from the Sweet Garden Blooms, the same set as the flowers. I think they work together really, really nice, and I like that. Here are those little edge pieces I was talking about that I'm simply going to fill in here and there. I know that one. The slimline cards do give me a little bit of trouble with filming just because they're so long and skinny. Sorry, that was off the edge of the camera. You can see this one a little bit better. I'd love to use my tweezers for any of these little teeny tiny pieces. So Sweet Friend is also going to be stamped with the Pink Fresh Studio Licorice ink. Remember, uh, that's the ink I used for the previous card as well. And it, when it dries, it dries kind of a dark gray. We're going to stamp that on the scrap of white cardstock and die cut that with another one of those nested banners dies. This is going to be the like the little notched or flag end banner die. And then that's going to be popped up with foam adhesive right underneath sending lots of hugs. I really felt like it just needed a little something more and another little phrase always is a great thing to add to finish off a card perfect. There is our little banner. And finally, I am gonna take a little red clay heart and add that somewhere on the sentiment. Ultimately, I kind of thought I would add it um, like to one of the letter O's, but I just couldn't find anywhere that I thought it fit great. But I actually really love it between the words lots and of. I think it works nice there. And the pop of red really looks fantastic and draws your eye into that sentiment even more. So we'll take a little Ranger multi matte medium and pop that in place to finish off our cards. So that is it for today, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing quite a few new products from the Simon Says Stamp All the Feels release. The supplies I used to create my cards today are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring more products from the Simon Says Stamp All the Feels release that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.